Biggest boss, Ricky Rose, you checking in with Mr. Teller. Yeah, MrTellerFarrow.com, it's official. All right, we are here for the first episode of the Mr. Teller Farrell Show. Finally, thank everybody for the love and support. We have a big show planned for you guys today. We got University of Tennessee point guard Kevin Punter in the building. We had the honor of interviewing Kevin outside of studio. We'll give you the highlights of that interview in a few minutes. We're also going to give you guys the top five DJ Khaled keys to success towards the end of the show. So you got to stick around and just stay tuned. Action packed show. I promise you're going to love it. But first thing first, I have to introduce you a guy that has been close to me for about four years now at the University of Tennessee. Um, I put his sports knowledge up with anybody, especially college football. I got fellow student, fellow colleague. Malcolm Harris with me. How you doing today? Alfred, it's good to be here, man. First episode. It's, I would, it's I wouldn't good to be it here. Off. I wouldn't kick it off with anybody else. Hey, man. I, I feel me. that. I feel that. It's you, good to be here. You ready to talk sports? I'm always ready. If you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. I heard that. Uh, All right. <laughs> me and Malcolm will be talking national and local sports every week for you. And first things first, coming yeah. off that All-Star break, the Golden State Warriors dropped an egg to the Portland Trailblazers <laughs> behind Damian Lillard's 51 points. Then Saturday night, Malcolm, they regrouped on mm -hmm. ABC, and the Warriors had a huge three-point win over the Clippers. Now, for the Warriors to still eclipse the Chicago Bulls' 72-win team, mm -hmm. they need to go 24-4 and four down the stretch. Malcolm, will they pull it off? They will. They will pull it off. Uh, I, I'm very confident with that statement because uh, just looking at Draymond Green, he is the MVP of uh, the Golden State Warrior team. Although Steph is the MVP of the NBA, Gr Draymond, he makes that team work. Right, you right. know, Draymond without, you know, his three-point shooting, which has been impeccable this year, you know, his assists, he's the triple-double king outside of Russell uh, Westbrook. So I just look for Draymond to really be the catalyst in getting them to, I'd say, 74 wins. Draymond Green is definitely a top 15 player in the league. Um, Draymond Green has the ability to not only space the floor, but defend mm -hmm. at, like, five positions, Malcolm. Mm -hmm. That guy is so slept on. And then you got Klay Thompson. We didn't even bring up Klay Thompson. We, we haven't even equation. talked about Klay. One of the smoothest strokes in the NBA. This team, I'm going with you. They're going to do it. Yeah. I, I think they'll, they'll get that 73 wins. Um, just looking at their schedule, I think they got about five more games on the road. Then they opened up a huge home swing. I think the last 17 of 24 are at home. Yeah, that's what I was just going to say. All their games are relatively at home. The thing with the Warriors that, that does concern me down the stretch um, getting overconfident or, or just, mm -hmm. you know, what are they playing for at this point? Mm -hmm. They're going to have the West locked up. The, I mean, obviously they can't drop the number two because that means you get OKC in the second round. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants that. No one. No one wants no that. No one. But I think, well, I'm with you, Malcolm, I think this team could possibly do it, go after that 73-win team. I thought they were going to drop an egg coming into the year. I Malcolm, they haven't. They're they coming out firing. They have it. Steph, Clay, Draymond. That's a big three right there. That's a big three. You know, and then you got that bench. And let's not forget, Harrison Barnes isn't a slouch by any means. Harrison Barnes is. Malcolm, they don't get injured. They don't. They don't. I've never big... seen. I've never seen anything like it. I think LeBron said not only they're a good team, he's never seen a team get the lucky end of health yep. like they've got. But let's stick with that game, Malcolm. Let's okay. just talk about another team in that game. The Los Angeles Clippers, they're an interesting team. They are. They still fourth in the Western Conference, maintaining their own without Blake Griffin. I got to ask you this, Malcolm. Have the Clippers played well enough to give you some confidence in them? And can they make a push in the postseason? What do you think about that? If the Clippers were in the East, I would say absolutely. But you have so much firepower in the West, from San Antonio to Golden State. To, to OKC, you know, we talked about them. So it's just, I, I personally feel that uh, that they just don't have that firepower within the West. I'm with you. If the Eastern, obviously the Western Conference is tougher night in and night out. You got every team can beat you night in and night out. Um, the Clippers, they're an interesting team. They played the Warriors better than anybody. They, they lost three games to them, but as far as matchups, if DeAndre Jordan isn't missing 100 free throws per game, <laughs> the team can compete with just about anybody in the NBA. They still got Chris Paul. He's still a leader. He's still giving you 10 assists, over 20 points a game, Malcolm. I like the team, but they complain a lot, Malcolm. They do complain, and, I mean, I love that backcourt yeah. with J.J. Redick and Chris Paul. Chris Paul looks like he's in New Orleans right now. Yes, he does. And, uh, you know, one piece I, I don't like, Blake Griffin. 
I don't like Blake for that Clippers team. So you're saying trade him in the offseason? I would have traded him wow. at the trade deadline. I would have traded him at the trade deadline because just you you don't need him. He's been a distraction for your team all season. Uh, I feel that Blake has reached his peak. I feel there's nowhere else for Blake to really even, you know, go to as as a, an elite player. He's going to be a very good player, mm-hmm. but that's all you're going to get out of Blake is a very good player. He doesn't have any post-up moves. I mean, Malcolm, if you put him in the post, you can't get Get a basket. No. He has improved no. on that jumper. That yes. jumper is oh, that's pretty yes. good now. Yes. He's not just a dunker that we yes. knew a couple years ago. He has improved there. But I'm with you, Malcolm. If you put him in the post, you can't get a basket. And with the off the court shenanigans that we're yes. getting from him, and it's it's crazy because when Zebo hits you or knocks you on the ground, you do nothing. No. But you'll come at the trainer or whoever it might be, and you'll you'll attack him. I'm with you, Malcolm. I mean, and it's a trainer com- yeah. compared to Blake Griffin. Yeah, that's that's me hitting Blake Griffin. Yeah. That's that's, I don't know. Just you know, he's had a lot of character uh, issues. You know, at his times in Oklahoma. You know, and other times. So I just, you know, I would have definitely given up, you know, Blake for, you know, a solid couple of bench players, or even like a, a star like Kevin Love. Even I would have given him up. So Ooh, that's a, that would have been a big trade going Kevin Love for Blake Griffin straight up. I think I don't think the I don't think the Cavs would have did it. I don't you don't think, think they, so? No, nobody believes in Blake around the league. His the quorum around the league is terrible. Nobody believes in Blake as a a a, a player that you want on your team deep into the postseason, he hasn't proven us anything. Yeah. You can't, he's okay from the free throw line. I think we kind of sleep on him at the free throw line because we have DeAndre Jordan and he gets so much attention. But I mean, Blake's not the best free throw shooter himself. Yeah, he's not. Let, let's stick with teams that been kind of, uh, okay, okay. haven't really just got over the hump. Okay. Let's talk about the Lady Vols. Malcolm, okay. the Lady Vols have simply not competed with the elite teams no. in basketball this year. Pretty much have went backwards all of Holly's four years. Diamond DeShield is just averaging 13 points per game mm-hmm. in her freshman year in North Carolina. Malcolm, she averaged 18 yes. points a game. Yes, she did. I got to pose the question to you, Malcolm. What's wrong with the Lady Vols? Um, I'm not sure. I'm truly not because, I mean, this is as talented as a roster that Holly has had. Yeah. Any know? team in the country. I mean, in the country, there, I mean, there is, you know, talent is not the issue, you know. And I don't even think coaching is the issue at this point. I think it's more so – the players, you know, Holly's not going to turn the ball over 19 times, Alfred, yeah. against South Carolina. That's that wasn't right. Holly on the court. True. You know, true. you can't control 19 turnovers. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't control getting out hustled by an inferior. I'm going to say it, an inferior opponent in LSU. Wow. You know, you can't control that, Alfred. I'm with you, Mercedes Russell. Holly can't go out there and make let her make a layup no. or her make a, a no. hook shot. She's putting them in the right spots, and I was somebody who was hard on Holly. In the beginning, but after watching them play and, and seeing South Carolina, I just I can't. Mercedes, is, she's in the right spot. She's, Bashar's in the right spot. They're not making plays, and Bashar has digressed every year since yes, she's been yes, here. Yes, I will say that. And big time players do big things in big games, and we have not seen that from this Lady Vol team this year. We just we have not seen that, and it's unfortunate with the talent. I mean, we were looking at an elite eighth berth minimum yeah. coming into this year. Now. You know, we'll we'll make the tournament. We'll be if a we, five six seed, but that doesn't yeah, mean anything. That doesn't, I mean, this is Tennessee basketball. Yeah. You know, so having lost eleven games in the program history, mm-hmm. we're on the way to a couple more losses. We have still got a couple more ranked opponents to go. Let's stay right there with teams who have a lot of talent but haven't shown it on the court this year. Men's basketball. Let's go, Ben Simmons. Now the Vols defeated Ben Simmons in LSU over the weekend, and now towards the end of the game. The fans began to chant, Malcolm, overrated, overrated. (laughs) Now, as they said that, Malcolm, he still had 21 points and 10 rebounds. I don't believe he's overrated. Is he the real deal? Um, Ben Simmons, he is the real deal. Uh, I I like his game, but uh, he's not the real deal that should be at Louisiana State University. He should not be at LSU simply because they are not – equipping him with the talent to, to to be the guy. If he was coached by Coach Cal at Kentucky, if he was coached by, you know, Coach K at Duke, you know, Ben Simmons would be a runaway, you know, player of the year candidate simply because of the fact of his game. I mean, he can stretch the floor. You know, they I was watching the game. They can't even get the ball to Ben Simmons. I agree with you more, Malcolm. He was in the right spot. He's clearly the best player on the court. They couldn't give him the ball where he needed to. And after Keith Hornsby got injured in the first half, mm-hmm. 
they had no one to get them the ball. And, and, and it's, it's crazy to say that mm-hmm. because, I mean, he chose LSU. Mm-hmm. He went out of his way he because he chose of, LSU. He chose LSU. And I'm not going to lie to you, Malcolm. If I'm him, you got to keep Kentucky, Kansas, or Duke the only choices. I hate to say that, Malcolm. You don't want to just limit players. But for a player of his caliber, mm-hmm. those should have been the only three options he had. Yep. And he should have chosen them three and picked the team because I'm with you, Malcolm. LSU just doesn't have the talent. They don't have any everything that that guy needs to maximize his talent. And what what he does better better than anybody, mm-hmm. he passes the basketball. He does better than anyone. He, he doesn't does. have the talent to knock down shots. He right he now. does pass the ball very very well. And uh, I hate to use this analogy because I, I don't like comparisons. Go but, ahead. You know I'm, I'm a crazy 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 comparer. So. It's a little magic LeBron if they had a child. Okay. It would, I'm just saying, okay look at it from now. the outside looking in. You Alfred. putting them expectations listen, on listen, him. I listen. love the kid, but I mean, them big expectations, Malcolm. You know, he did not perform as well as I would have liked him to this past week. Uh-huh. You know, I mean, there were some shots he left on the floor, obviously. And, I mean, let's just be real. The Tennessee basketball team, they were playing nothing short of heart. That was all heart, that yep. victory. Knew they were at the but, leader. They just knew they had to give it all. Yeah, they, they, gave, it they all. gave it all without Kevin Punter. So, but – Ben, I mean, he's just a monster from, mm-hmm. you know, every single spot on the floor. He can spread the just the ball and it's just it's I can't say enough about him. Malcolm, when he's grabbing rebounds, he's getting the ball and legit getting out like a point guard. It, it looks he like my point player. guard. Speed. It looks like my player. You're playing 2K <laughs> and he's literally um, getting the ball. He's like a, a just a monster. A 99 overall. Right. right. You know how you make your my player really, really high. <laughs> that's that's how it reminds me the of. The center dribbling the ball. Yep. Let's stick with that game, though, Malcolm. Um, we already mentioned that we did that. We won, we won that game without our leader, Kevin Punter. Now, I got to ask you about our men's team here in Tennessee. If Punter gets healthy, can this team make a push in the SEC tournament, which would, in our situation we have to win it, and make the tournament of 68? Can we do that? Oh, wow. I, uh... I personally believe that we're not going to make the tournament. Okay. Just being real, I mean, we're definitely going to be a strong seed in the NIT tournament, and you know, no doubt. But the actual NCAA tournament, I just don't believe that we will make it unless we actually win the SEC tournament. I will say though, we are going to break a lot of dreams for the next couple of weeks. I mean, the on the bubble teams, I wouldn't want to play Tennessee right now. I would not. I kind of want to disagree with you. If Kevin can get healthy. Because, Malcolm, if you think about it, we've beaten the top four teams in the SEC. Mm -hmm. We can beat anybody. It's just the fact we have to do it at home. Mm -hmm. We have not been a good road team. I think we're like three and nine or something like that. It's bad on the road. Mm -hmm. We don't have a lot of leadership. I think we can, though. I really think, Malcolm, this team can beat anybody in the country. And if you're asking me, can they win four or five straight games with Admiral Schofield's heart, with our money playing the way he did wow. against Ben Simmons? Wow. And you know our money's not going to want to end his career. No, you know, he's not. Don't get me started on he's Kevin not. if he can get if he, if he can if get he going. Can get right, yes. Yeah, I think, Malcolm, I'm not going to lie to you. I think they can pull it off. I really do. I think they can win four straight games. And you know I just wouldn't say it just for TV. I really think this team can win four straight games and make that tournament. They'll be at the bottom, so they'll have to – they won't get any buys. Yeah. So I, I think they, they really can wrap it up. And uh, Malcolm, with that, I think we're done with sports. Okay. I got to thank you for joining me. Now, Malcolm will be back every week. I promise you that. Um, when we get back, we're going to give you the scoop with a guy we just talked about, Kevin Punter. This is the Mr. Taylor Farrell Show. Why would you go anywhere? I basically told her, you know, I, I think I'm about done. And, you know, I was crying, you know, all of that. Basically, where we are is a couple a day, is what we average out to. You can't stop it. It's, you know you're hurting your child. You know you're doing this to them. But yet you're still going to go out and get that other pill. On second in the SEC in scoring, second on the team in assists, but clearly number one on the ball team in leadership. Here are some highlights of our interview with Kevin Punt. All right, as we kick off the Mr. Telefero show, our first guest, he leads his team in scoring, tempting the nation at 22.4 points per game. He's easily the catalyst of his team, the profound leader of his team, leading his team on the way as they try to make the NCAA tournament. Um, quite frankly, one of the hardest working individual, individuals I've ever seen. We got 
UT point guard Kevin Punter in the building. How you doing, my man? I'm good, man. How you doing? I'm good. I got to thank you for taking the time out to do this interview. I know you're extremely busy. I know, knowing you, I know you'd rather be in the gym right now. Yep, yep. Uh, Coach actually uh, gave me the day off today, so he don't even want me in the gym today. So I'm just, you know, I'm just cooling today. Are you really going to buy by that, though? If, yeah. if you, they say it don't be in the gym, that means Kevin might only work out nah, once now. I don't got no choice. I don't got no What's choice. That? So they kind of, you know, they real strict on me when it uh -huh. comes to that. You know, they want me to really rest. So. Do you think you need to rest? How does your body feel right now at this point? Um, I feel good. I mean, I'm a little tired. I'm not going to lie to you. But um, every time I wake up in the morning, I just feel the urge and need to, you know, do something in the gym. But I know sometimes I need to cut back a little bit. Mm -hmm. I kind of seen the same thing with Josh. At mm -hmm. this point in the season, actually a little sooner with him last year. I mean, just being the point guard and being the primary ball handler at this point in the season, you could tell he was, you know, yeah. it's just the fouls, the double teams, everything was just starting to wear on him. Is, yeah. You know, is that some of the things you've seen as well? Uh, yeah, definitely. You know, it started uh, in conference play. You know, a lot of teams started picking up and trying to figure out different ways to get me off the ball and trap me and prevent me from scoring a lot of times. Uh, you know, I've seen double teams, box ones. You know, I've seen all different type of defenses thrown at me and just had to adjust to it. Can you take us back? Um, can we go back to the JUCO days and just kind of the early basketball beginnings, mm -hmm. getting to this this point, you know, starting for an SEC school? Yeah. Um, obviously, I started in uh, State Fair College uh, in Missouri. I wasn't always a player I was today. You know, I just pretty much worked my behind off each and every year, got better each and every summer. And I uh, really just worked my way to where I'm at right now. To be honest with you, you know, there's nothing special to it. There's no magic trick to it. It's just really just... Just working every year. I believe the CBS story talks mm -hmm. about you almost giving up on the game yeah. of basketball. I believe yeah. it was a conversation with moms. Mm -hmm. How did that go, and what was that about? Yeah, well, that was crazy. I, uh, you know, in high school, you take a, a SAT score. Some take a ACT score, and I took a SAT score. Uh, when I was in prep school in North Carolina, um, I couldn't get my SAT score, which had prevented me from playing college mm -hmm. basketball, obviously. So, um, you know, I didn't know what route to go, so I basically told her, you know, I, I think I'm about done, and you know I, I was crying, you know all of that, just basically really about to give it up. And she told me um, to think about it and call her back. You know I thought about it for a little minute, ended up calling her back and told her I wanted to stick with it. But I, that that was just the point in time where I was I was just frustrated. I didn't know what junior college was. I didn't want to go that route, and you know I just I, I was just blind to to a lot of things. But um, it ended up being the best route for me. So what was the turning point? I mean, just with the worth ethic, because everything I hear about you, people might not know this, yeah. but this guy's practicing before he has practice with the team. He's working extremely hard to get to this point. Mm -hmm. Like, what was the turning point for you as far as your worth ethic? Um, I don't even know to be honest with you. That's something I always had since I was a little kid. You know, I always, I always, I was never really given nothing. You know, I always had to work for everything I got, and that's kind of how I am now, and, you know, I, I see results, I see it showing itself, but um, one thing about me, I'm never really going to forget, you know, how I got here or, you know, what got me here, so me, I just stick to, you know, simple simple rules, just, you know, just continue to work and get better every day. Can you talk about changing your jumper? A lot of speculation about that early on in the season, how would that impact you, and I believe Coach Barnes reached out to you and told you he wanted you to change your shot. Can you talk about that adjustment and how hard was it for you? Yeah, uh, I you know, last year I shot, I didn't shoot the way I shot this year in terms of mechanics and stuff like that. But, um, you know, when Coach Barnes had first took the job, you know, he was, you know, watching us work out or whatnot. And he first approached me with, you know, if you want to continue to play basketball after here, then, you know, I think the first thing you should do is uh, change your shot because, you, know, you know, he didn't like it. And he just felt like I could have a more, you know, better looking shot rather, you know, than how I shot last year. So, um, you know, he started, he started working with me with that. You know, and, you know, it was a frustrating process. You know, at one point in time, I didn't think I really wanted to do it just for the simple fact that I'm a senior in college. I've been doing it all my life while changing now. But, um, you know, I listened to him and stuck with it, and, you know, it's worked out for me for the best. Speaking of Coach Barnes, can you talk about the impact he's had on you as a player? Um, how impactful has it been to be under his leadership and his watch? It's, it's, it's really a blessing. You know, how, how I think is uh, – Everything happens for a reason, and um, you know I, I was placed into a position at the point guard role in which I never played before ever in my life, and you know he he's taught me. I've learned a ton of things from him since he's took since he's taken the job, and you know I continue to learn 
a lot about him now, and I've been, you know, playing for him for a while now. So, you know, um, like I said, it's, it's just been a blessing, and I wish I could have been here to play at least one more year with him. Um, he's coached so many of the greats, from, mm -hmm. from Kevin Durant and Tristan Thompson, what he got right now. There's yep. just so many of the greats. Does that add pressure to you, or is it, does that help you in a way? Because you know, because he speaks really highly of you. As a matter of fact, I've been to numerous press mm -hmm. conferences when he just talked about how he, you could be one of the special ones. Yeah. And you know he coached KD and Tristan, like I said. Does that add any pressure to you? Not really. Uh, like I said, I try not to think about I could easily think about all the pressure that could really be added on me, and that that probably drive me crazy. But, um... I try not to think about that. Like I tell, I just try to stay focused, and you know, all that stuff is going to be there. You know, so I try not to focus on that, and just try to make sure I'm doing what I'm supposed. To, uh, make sure I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, and um, control everything I control. Well, I generally tell people that the team that that Kevin's on right now, this team is undersized, mm -hmm. but they can compete with anyone in the country on any given night. Yeah. Do you share that same sentiment? What do you think about the team? That you just just the way how we play, how we compete. You know. Um, we, we may not be the biggest team, but I feel like we're a lot quicker, faster than a lot, than a lot of teams, which gives us the upper hand, you know. you seen Josh Richardson. We brought him up earlier in the interview. Literally, you're doing the exact same thing he had to do last year. You're yeah. the best player on this team. You had to move over to the point guard. Um, last year, you were playing more of the two, yeah. getting your shots off with Josh. You're literally, you literally watched that last year, and, and that became you this year. Um, for you personally, how has that been? And have you even been able to reach out to Josh and talk to him since he's been with Miami? Yeah, I've spoken with uh, Rich a, a couple of times since he's been with Miami. You know, not too, too often. You know, I'm sure he's busy. I'm busy here. But um, it, it's, it's crazy. You know, last year he had the point guard role. And, you know, my role last year, I really just wanted to get in where I fit in at. Um, you know, help him out, you know, in terms of having support, you know, get other guys he can go to to score the ball. And, you know, it's just it's just crazy how time changed. And, you know, um, I, I'm in this position he was in last year. All right, I pay close attention to you in warm-ups. Now, generally speaking, you're the one laying it in, mm -hmm. never doing anything fancy, trying to get more shots up, get as many dribbles as you can in, preparing for the game. Now, your teammates, speaking on Diedrich or, you know, some of the other guys, I see them going crazy with the dunks, yes. and I look at you, and sometimes I think, is this frustrating them a little bit? Do I, would I rather my team be getting more shots up? Because you and Devin, y'all seem like y'all in a different mentality yeah. pregame. I mean, pregame, it just depends on the type of player you are. I'm just more the type of player. I'm, I'm going to do what I'm going to do in the game. You know, floaters, you know, pull-up jump shots, three, you know, just different type of Layup packages underneath the rim, you know, just, you know, a lot of times dudes be on a layup line, you know, they just, they just want to, you know, just jump, you know, but and ain't nothing wrong with that. But uh, it just depends what type of uh, player you are. You know, there's a few times where I go out there and may dunk, you know, once or twice, but after that I'm back to, you know, what I usually do. Let's talk about you and games now. I'm literally giving you both ends, ends of the spectrum here. I've seen you score 36 against South Carolina. Can you talk about getting that hot? And, and that was such a big win for you guys yeah. at the time. Yeah. They were, I think they were like 19-1 and one at the mm -hmm. time or something like that. That was such a big win for you at the time. Can you speak about hot Kevin and when he when he gets it going and the impact you can have on the game? Um, I, I know for a fact when I get hot, I'm not going to miss. <laughs> you know, uh, when I get into that zone, to be honest with you, when I, when, when I get into that zone, shots I start hitting is really shots that – all shots I shoot is shots I, I work out in practice. So when I start getting hot, all those shots are shots I shoot, you know, when I'm working out in the gym and stuff like that. So, you know, which is why I feel like once I get hot, I'm not going to miss because it's always shots I practice and, and repetition on. So, you know, once I get into that zone, it's, it's a wrap. Now, generally, I'm, I'm paying attention to you closely mm -hmm. every game. Usually, first couple possessions, you'll get a look up. You'll just get, it seems like you'll usually go for a jumper early on mm -hmm. just to see you get a feel for the game and everything. Yeah. Um, against Auburn, last time out, you didn't do that. It was, yeah. it was different, Kevin. Yeah, yeah. Now, let's talk about the four points you had against Auburn. And then, now let's talk about Kevin, who didn't have it going, so to say, last night, but the team had it going. And I still was able to see a Kevin 
who was still happy. Didn't even play much, much of the really? game, but I've still seen a Kevin that was so happy for his teammates. I think I seen Ray make a hook shot, yep, and yep, he was up yep. cheering like, "How now? Let's that that side of Kevin. What's that like? Just if you don't have it going, how yeah. you can affect the game in other ways? Um, just by being out there, being a leader. You know, I, I don't have to score. I don't have to do none of that to you know to affect the game. And last night, my first shot, I believe it rattled in and out. And, um, you know, I was really, I was, to be honest, I was pissed about that because that one was wide open. But um, as the flow of the game was going, everyone, you know, everyone was clicking. So, like I said, I mean, I just, I kind of just fit right into it. Um, I missed a few shots I normally make, but uh, I really don't trip about it. But, um, you know, I just, I just continue to play. And, you know, I got in foul trouble, so I was on the bench most of the first half. And everyone was clicking. I think we was up 11 at half. A second half came. I think I picked up a quick third foul. Coach took me out. I mean, everything was just flowing, you know. And I came into the game, I didn't even want to look to score, you know. I mean, it was we was already winning. I was just trying to get some movement going, and there's no need to try to come in and just try to put numbers up. And you know, I, I was happy for everybody. Kevin, personally, if y'all season ended today, you gotta say your biggest win coming back from 21 against Kentucky. Yep. Can you, I seeing your emotion after the game? I watched it. You were just so emotional after that game, that big win, being doubted. You had people leaving at halftime, yeah. coming back. Can you speak about that win and how big? And I heard you say everybody wants to beat Kentucky. Yeah. Can you speak about how big that win was for you? I didn't even know people left at halftime. To be honest with Some you, some people left at halftime. I didn't, I didn't yeah. even know that. But um, you know, we we kept fighting. You know, coach preach. You know, you know, we're down 21, but you got to continue to fight and show where your toughness is at. And with us, we we continue to, you know, hang around. We hung around, hung around, and, you know, we hit a few shots. Next thing you know, we was, we, we, we was, what, probably down 10, 8. And then next thing you know, we were, you know, it was a tie game, and we was up like one or two, three, something like that. But, um, you know, it started to be a back-and-forth game, and we finally, you know, just pulled away from it. NBA player Kevin most resembles, if there's anybody. I know who I got on the top of my head, but if there's somebody you, as far as mentality, overall game, that you just compare yourself to, I'd probably say Kevin Durant, which is funny. Uh, I, I watched him since Coach Barnes was coaching him at Texas, and you know, since then he just he really always been my favorite player. You know, growing up. The irony I was gonna say Russell Westbrook, as really? far as mentality, yeah, yeah. as far as. Getting on teammates yeah. <laughs> as far as mentality in game, I was gonna yeah. say Russ. All right, when we come back, we'll have more with your favorite ball, Kevin Punter. Composition of meteorites and scientist on the first spacecraft missions to Mars is one person, Dr. Hap McSween, distinguished professor at the University of Tennessee. A rock flying through space is also a specialty of Tennessee alum R.A. Dickey, big league knuckleballer and best-selling author. At UT, we appreciate and encourage unique and creative minds. The University of Tennessee, big orange, big ideas. My favorite part about being involved and being a part of Fall Family is that we're one Tennessee. Being from Tennessee and being able to go to school at the University of Tennessee was an honor for me. My scholarship means so much to me. It's really a blessing. My message to the Tennessee Fund donors would be just to say thank you for giving me the opportunity to pursue my dreams. We appreciate everything that you guys do for us. Thank you so much. It really does mean a lot to me and my teammates. Ball fans, there's one penalty that is not reviewable. So where's your orange? It's Friday. And you're not wearing orange. You gonna really come out here with no orange on? Do not forget to support your balls by wearing your orange on Fridays. You got to be kidding me. Show us your orange and avoid getting a penalty flag thrown your way on Big Orange Friday. All right, we are back with the Mr. Teller Farrell Show. We, under, we understand what Kevin can do on the court, but let's talk about some of the things he partakes in off the court, specifically music. Now, we are also joined by Ms. Jatan Bolin, a.k.a. Queen Jack. Now, she'll be having her own segment on the show weekly. She'll be giving you the gossip spill and everything else going. She'll be asking our athletes those tough questions that, to be honest with you, I don't feel comfortable asking men. So she'll be doing that for us. We're going to swing it over to Kevin. First, Kevin, first question to Kevin, you're from the Bronx. 
Basically, talk to me about music. Is is for you? Is it bars that you're still listening to, or is or is it the Atlanta the turn up scene that we got going right now? Um, back at home, it's more so bars. You know, uh, when I came out here, it was more so like the turn up, the beats. But uh, you know, that, I think that's the difference between out here and back at home. Back at home, it's just straight bars, 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 and here it's more like beats and turn up. It's a hard thing. So, how do you feel about the whole Drake and Meek Mill feud? Like, how do you feel? Who do you feel like is the better artist? And how do you feel about all of the beats? Yeah, I mean, overall, I feel like Drake is the better artist just for the simple fact that he's more worldwide. You know, a lot of people, you know, you know, like how Drake switches it up rather than Meek. He's always, you know, probably yelling and screaming. But um, me, I really don't, I really don't care about the whole beef thing or whatnot. But, but as far as music though, Kevin, they're saying Drake. They're saying Drake really has somebody writing. They saying Quentin really writing these rhymes. Yeah, yeah. You said it's about bars. We know Meek write his. Mm -hmm. If it's about bars, we can't just allow Drake. We understand him top. He can sing and do this, <laughs> but we cannot allow somebody from Canada coming out the country <laughs> and not even be writing his own raps, Kevin. Nah, you're right. But uh, I honestly don't even care. He making money off of it. We all buying it. We all listening to it. And, you know, I guess that's all that matters. So you, you still a fan of Drake, though? Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, still a fan. And I like Meek, too, so. Now, since you're from the Bronx, I got I to gotta bring up uh, easily the biggest, Hove. Mm -hmm. Somebody you listen to? Do you respect the business moves more? Or? I want to get y'all to input on, on Hove, and we'll even get into Beyonce a little bit since we know Jatan loves her Beyonce. <laughs> I mean, I respect Hov as a man, as a music producer, you know, as a rapper, everything. Um, you know, he, he he's a great businessman, you know, um, when he stopped rapping. I, and I still think he do rap a few, you know, a, a, a couple times. But um, I, I really like his music down to uh, Blueprint, Blueprint 2. Uh, I think one was, man, I forgot the name of it, but... Um, uh, I like Hov, and, and I listen to Hov a lot. So, since we're talking about Jay Z, of course mm -hmm. we're going to talk about Beyonce. So, did you watch the Super Bowl? Yeah, yeah, I did, but not the halftime performance. What? Yeah. I so mean, you didn't see Beyonce's performance? No, nah, I at saw all. yeah on YouTube. I so, saw I saw a little bit of it, but I wasn't. I'm not really a big fan of Beyonce. To be honest. With you. So does that mean you're part of the Rihanna Navy? The what? Rihanna Navy. If you're not in the Beehive, you have to be in the Rihanna Navy. It's one or the other. No, nah, I don't like none of them. So you won't be going to Beyonce's concert? Not at all. I'm, I'm cool. I'm cool. I stick to Hove. I'm going to get on out of here off this. We're going to leave music alone. So I got a couple more questions. Musically, when you're warming up, what's your playlist like? Who you got on it right now? Are we heavy on Future right now? Cause he flooding the streets. We got Thug. What we got on the on the, on the iPod and the phone right now? We got a little bit of got a little bit of Thug. Um, I got the game. Okay. And I'll probably say I'm not a big music person before the game, but when I do listen to it, I probably like I said Thug of the game. And I like I like G Herbo. Out of out of uh out of Chicago, G Herbo and uh Lil Bibby. Okay. Yeah. Top top five in the game right now. Drake number one. Okay. Right now. Right now. Right, right now. now. Right now. Drake Future. Oh man, Drake Future top five right now. I probably throw. I want to throw Thug in there. Not in that order though. Okay. Uh, Drake Future Thug. I don't know who else. I need two more. Hold on, we gonna forget Kendrick Cole. We ain't bringing up nothing. I just haven't, I haven't heard, I haven't heard nothing. You said right now, so I don't really. About right now, you could throw. Matter of fact, I like, I like Kendrick personally. You could throw Kendrick in there in that last. Matter of fact, number one, I'm always put Hove to be honest with you. So oh. I put Hove number one, and everybody else could fall in line. Hove ain't making no music right now. How you gonna, you gonna knock Cole <laughs> and Kendrick? Matter of fact, change that, J Cole. J. Cole. J. Cole, yes. Yeah. J. Cole. All right, I'm going to get out of this section, and when we come back, I'm going to let Jatan and Kev talk a little bit more about, again, those questions I wouldn't ask. Um, They're going to have their little bit. I'm going to get on out of here. When we come back, Jatan takes over with Kevin Punter right back after this. Basically, where we are is a couple a day is what we average out to. You can't stop it. It's... You know you're hurting your child. 
you know you're doing this to them, but yet you're still gonna go out and get that other pill. So now we are back with the Mr. Taliferro Show, and now it is time for a Tea Time with Queen Jet. So, Kevin, being an SEC athlete, being the best athlete on the team, and getting as much attention as you normally get, how do you weed out? Like, who's genuine? Who's just talking to you because of your name? And who do you decide to, you know, actually spend time with? Yeah. Um, majority of the time I'm with my teammates. You know, um, any outsiders that really try to come in, for the most part, we don't pay them no, you know, no attention for the simple fact that, you know, you just as an athlete, you just got to be careful who you keep around you. So to eliminate all that, I just pretty much stay around the same people I've been with since forever. So, so since you're saying that, what's your typical response when girls approach you or somebody tries to talk to you? Me what's either. like a, a typical KP response? It depends on what they approach me with. So well, let's say they approach you, they slide in your DMs, and, or somebody makes you a man crush you Monday. Uh, I mean, I don't reply to that. So you never respond to any of the no. any of the groupies? No. Are you sure? I'm positive. Okay, that's a good answer. So, since we're talking about girls, what would you say your type is? How would you describe, if you had to... Lay it out, lay it all out, like everything you want in a girl, or describe the person that you already, you know, that already has your attention. How would you describe? I'd probably say either light skin or brown skin. If I had to, if I had to choose light skin or brown skin, um, great personality, um, sense of humor, knows how to uh, keep a conversation, and if they surpass all of that, then you know I'll consider moving forward. Moving forward into Moving forward as in taking it more of an a serious approach. Like a relationship? Taking more of a serious approach. Or serious dating. Taking more of a serious approach into talking heavier, deeper, whatever you wanna whatever you wanna say. So after those long days, like you've been on the road or you've had a game and you've had a lot of practice, what do you do to like wind down or what do you do to cope from that loss mm -hmm. or is there somebody that you call? Like how do you deal with it? Um, I really just, to be honest with you, it's simple. Uh, I'll probably just go home, relax, uh, just, just lay low, chill. I'm, I'm a real laid back person. In terms of calls, you know, I mean, I may call my my mom, you know, talk to her for a little minute, you know, making sure everything is good at, you know, good at the crib. But other than that, I just lay low. Okay, KP, thank you for coming to sip tea with me. And that is all for Tea Time with Queen Jack. When we come back, we are going to give you Telefero's Take featuring DJ Khaled with a few people you might have heard of. Stay tuned. When you started tweeting, and when you tweet, you tweet another one, then another one. In composition of meteorites, and scientist on the first spacecraft missions to Mars is one person, Dr. Hap McSween, distinguished professor at the University of Tennessee. A rock flying through space is also a specialty of Tennessee alum R.A. Dickey, big league knuckleballer and best-selling author. At UT, we appreciate and encourage unique and creative minds. The University of Tennessee, big orange, big ideas. My favorite part about being a Vol and being a part of Vol family is that we're one Tennessee. Being from Tennessee and being able to go to school at the University of Tennessee was an honor for me. My scholarship means so much to me, it's really a blessing. My message to the Tennessee Fund donors would be just to say thank you for giving me the opportunity to pursue my dreams. We appreciate everything that you guys do for us. Thank you so much, it really does mean a lot to me and my teammates. Ball fans, there's one penalty that is not reviewable. So where's your orange? It's Friday. And you're not wearing orange. You gonna really come out here with no orange on? Do not forget to support your Vols by wearing your orange on Fridays. You got to be kidding me. 
Show us your orange and avoid getting a penalty flag thrown your way on Big Orange Friday. Who has this much fun even without winning anything? Check out Patriots tight end Rob Gronkowski. He's number five on our list of things that stood out to me this week. Excuse me, Mr. Gronkowski. Um, I don't know if you know this, but your Patriots team lost to the Broncos in the, in the playoffs. You have no room to be twerking on stage rocking the boat, Mr. Gronkowski. I'm glad you're having fun. DJ Khaled has a message for you. You smart. Once the season was over, it's time for Gronkowski to have some fun. You smart for that, Rob. And for that, you're one of the top five things that I thought about this week. At number four, Kendrick Lamar, during his performance, he won five Grammys, but it wasn't just him winning the five Grammys that stood out. His performance was one for the ages. Check out some highlights yourself. As we proceed to give you what you need, tap our bodies, but take like a hundred bodies, just stop. We've been hurt down before When our pride was low Looking at the world, where do we go? I'm at the preacher's door When they get a dead at the preacher's That was probably the most impactful performance I've ever seen in my life. Kendrick, it took me a couple times to watch it just to really get some of the nuances of everything Kendrick had going. Kendrick, I'm proud of you, man. That performance is going to stick around forever in 2040 when we're at the Grammys then. Kendrick, that performance was one for the ages. And for you, sir, congratulations on the five Grammys, but for you, Kendrick, DJ Khaled has a message for you. You very smart. Kendrick, you very smart because you knew that would spark up a fire in mainstream America when you decided to go with that performance. And for having that strength, being that brave, you and your team, I gotta thank you, man. You really sparked up that conversation. Thank you, Kendrick. Let's keep it moving. This is funny. Actually, everything from here on out will be funny. Number three on my list. You got to watch this to believe it. Shaq Goodwin of the Memphis Tigers, my hometown. I don't know what the guy was thinking. Just look for yourself and, and, and you tell me what you think. Aaron Oliver came on for Ryan Smith. Poked at by Goodwin. Oh, here's a fun one. Stuck in the rim. Technical foul. A wow. technical on Shaq Goodwin. And he celebrates. What? What are you doing? is going on now that's embarrassing that's embarrassing and if i'm josh pastor I, I have no words he came back with a taunting of fans and to do that first of all is classless second of all what are you thinking and he's getting high fives up and down the bench and hip bumps and I mean, who's the guy that high-fived him? I'm like, what, guys, where is the focus right now? Again, giving up 42 points at halftime to Tulane, embarrassment enough, but where is the focus? You're playing for the NCAA tournament bid. You're playing for positioning in the American. You just lost to Houston in a game you should have won. Where is the focus? That's not Josh Pastor. That's not on him. That's ridiculous. If I'm Josh Pastor, I've, I've been there before. I've never seen anything as ridiculous as that. You know, I'm the kind of guy, and look at her left. I probably wouldn't put him back in the game the rest of the game. That's what kind of guy I was. But again, you talk about what you're dealing with at Memphis right now. This makes no sense. Look, this is Rick Barnes' first year at Tennessee. But I know him in about 300 other schools in college basketball would not be going for that. Josh Pasner, you got to get him off the floor for the rest of the season. Shaq Goodwin. You cannot be putting your elbow in the rim in the game that you guys were losing and went on to lose after getting blown out the game before. You can't be putting your head, your elbow in the rim. What were you thinking? Where's your head? You don't have your head in that moment. Shaq, you can't be doing that. And for you, my friend, DJ Khaled has a message for you. Win, 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 no matter what. 
That's the goal, Shaq. You're supposed to be winning, winning, winning no matter what. You didn't have your mind on winning. All you had your mind on was getting out and making a highlight play in a game that was close. Shaq, we need you. You're one of our best players. You're the senior on the team. You got to be a leader in that situation. But you weren't. And for that, Mr. Goodwin, you played yourself in DJ Khaled's voice. Let's keep it moving. Now, this was just one of those weeks. All right. With Shaq, he probably would have been number one on any other week. But since we had so much going on, Kanye West, probably one of the most popular, and I'll give him this, impactful in his voice, rappers of our generation. But Kanye, you took it too far. The Life of Pablo, I went through it up and down. A fantastic album. But you want to know why we're not talking about the album wholeheartedly right now? Kanye, because you decided to go off on Twitter time and time after again. I seen one meme. Kanye, you tweet like you only got Wi-Fi for 30 minutes a day. Can you please act like you've been somewhere before, like you, you've you won so many Grammys, been nominated for many more. Kanye, act like you have some dignity. Act like you just put out the number one album in the country. Please get it together. You want to see what I'm talking about? Watch this. Now, as you can see, Kanye, you're distracting me from my creative process. Then, this is with Wiz Khalifa. He's basically telling Wiz, I own your child. You wouldn't have a child if it wasn't for me. Just summarizing a couple of the tweets. Don't ever hear them mentioning me with my family or my wife. I am your OG. What, Kanye? What are you, what are you saying? And then he goes on to apologize, and I'm happy to know that K, K, K means weed. Um, then he goes on to ask Mark Zuckerberg for a, million, a billion dollars to invest in his ideas, and then he says he's the greatest living artist and greatest artist of all time. Kanye, sir. You got to get it together, my man. Again, like I said, The Life of Pablo is a fantastic album. But we're not talking about that today. We're talking about you tweeting. What are you doing tweeting Wiz Khalifa telling that man you own his child? You cannot be tweeting that. You got to get it together. And for that, DJ Khaled has a message for you. Another one. Another one. Another one. Another one. Another one. And another one. You want to know what that message means? Another one. Another one. When you started tweeting and when you tweet, you tweet another one. Then another one. Then guess what, Kanye? You tweet another one. You need to gain some self-control because you're ruining this fantastic album. And number one on my list, I promise you, Kanye would have been number one any other week. But I don't have anything to say about this one. I let Matt Friedman of the Associated Press tell you this story about Dr. Love. A Florida teen taken into custody by West Palm Beach police. 18-year-old Malachi Love Robinson facing multiple charges, including practicing medicine without a license. Police say he gave a medical exam to an undercover officer. They say you examined a patient today. You will from my lawyer. According to his Facebook page and website, Dr. Love Robinson offers holistic and urgent care at his New Birth, New Life Medical Center. I've done a lot of courses in institutions, uh, locally and some non-locally non in alternative medicine. I've attended many conventions and conferences, and I've done many exams which are required to get your boards and anything. Before his arrest, Love Robinson spoke to WPBF-TV. So many physicians, they speak to me, and they're just in awe. And it's not because I'm a great person, not because I'm some miracle from heaven sent. It's just because I have a passion for helping people. The Florida Health Department doesn't agree and sent him a cease and desist order. And last year, West Palm Beach police detained Love Robinson after he was allegedly caught in a pregnant woman's exam room at St. Mary's Medical Center. I requested to shadow some physicians. Next thing I know, cops are there. The sign outside his office with MD taped over. I am not portraying myself as an MD. Defending himself again during his Tuesday arrest. I'm hurt because of the accusations and the allegations, but like I said, this is not the first time where I've been accused and I will pursue this. Love Robinson now free on a $21,000 bond. Matt Friedman, Associated Press. Excuse me, Mr. Malachi Love. You have completely lost your mind. You are not a doctor. You've never been a doctor. 
And quite frankly, I hope they lock you up so you will never become a doctor. What are you talking about? They interrupted you in your practice. You don't have a practice. You wanna know why? You don't have a degree. You're, you're not a doctor, man. You don't own an office. You don't own anything. You just, I don't know how they let you get this far. Something's wrong with you and I advise you, since now I'm a psychiatrist, since we're just waking up and being whatever we want to be, I advise you to get to the, first, the closest mental institute as soon as possible because you lost your mind. I, I, I could go on all day about this, but DJ Khaled got a message for you, Mr. Love. Play yourself. Don't ever play yourself. Don't ever play yourself. Don't ever play yourself. Congratulations. You played yourself. You played yourself, Mr. Love. Now, I got to thank everybody who made this show happen. My, for my executive producer, Angela, my associate producers, Malcolm and Jaton, and everyone else that made this show happen, I got to thank you. Next week, our guest is Cam Sutton. And I want to leave you with a quote from Malcolm X. The future belongs to those who prepare for it today. I got to thank you for watching the Mr. Taylor Farrell Show. We will be back next week.